Hey guys, my name is Alex, I run the Summer Boys channel and I've been doing car registry for over 10 years. Car registry is a beautiful art form of manipulating playing cards and it's been a passion of mine at some point, it has become a full-time job and I'm extremely grateful for all the moments and new people that I managed to meet uh, at car registry con events and while visiting different countries. You might have seen a viral video, you might have seen a movie and uh, now you're here, you want to master car registry and I've been in your place at some point, I've been a total beginner, I didn't know where to start and this is exactly the video for beginners and even if you're very extreme card manipulator, yeah. you also might be able to find some useful tips in this one. Uh, but before we move into the video, I wanted to ask you uh, to rate my drip. These are the t-shirts uh, sent to us from our friends in the United States in today I am. Some of you guys may already know that I'm a big fan of t-shirts and uh, it's extremely rare when I can find a good combination of a very cool art and a good quality of uh, the materials and these guys nailed it. There is huge selection of tees, you can get bundles and save a lot and you'll be supporting our channel if you'll be using a special link in the description. This will be also giving you 10% of your order. So first and foremost we need to talk about the main tool that you'll be using and I'm talking about the deck of playing cards. Majority of people prefer playing cards produced by the United States playing card company and uh, there's of course some other companies, Cartamundi, cards produced in Belgium, coincidentally they also bought out the entire USPC, but that is a completely different story. There's also Legends playing card company, some other factories located in Asia, but I suggest you trying out the cheapest available deck produced by the United States playing card company for practicing. And of course, if I was smart enough, I would probably be plugging to you guys and saying that this is the best deck. And it's, it's a great deck because we use the best materials out there, crush stock uh, of the United States playing card company to produce this. But in reality, you don't need a designer deck of playing cards to start practicing and you need to get the cheapest thing out there and start working. Now it's also important to notice how exactly you're about to practice and it may sound obvious but you probably would want to start practicing over a soft surface and so that it isn't really difficult for you to grab the cards once they're falling down and believe me the cards will be falling down and they'll be falling down a lot and if a card is falling down on its side its corner is damaged it is ruining pretty much the entire deck. It's uh, possible to straighten them up a little bit, uh, but it's still uh, not the same. So practice over a sofa or over a special mat and uh, you'll be fine. And also, I would suggest you trying and practicing with different decks at the same time. You have like one or two hours dedicated to your practice session. And uh, the humidity levels will be over the roof and uh, you probably would want to rotate or switch between the decks, putting the cards back into the box and naturally they'll be straightening up on their own, the humidity will be going away and this way eventually you'll be able to prolong the life cycle of each deck individually. So how do you actually start? I suggest you starting with classics and classics is obviously understanding terminology and terminology is uh, starting with grips. So there are few different grips and I'll be covering the most important and most popular ones. The first one is the dealer's grip or it's also called the mechanics grip. You're holding the deck the following way. Uh, your thumb is placed alongside this long edge. Your index finger is placed alongside the short edge and on the opposite side you have pinky, ring finger and uh, middle finger. Also it's important to notice that I'm right-handed and usually it is accepted that uh, if you're right-handed all the grips are starting in your non-dominant hand. The second grip is the straddle grip. It's a variation of mechanics grip where your pinky is actually placed on this short edge. So this way the deck is secured on all edges. And of course, there's a variation for the straddle grip where you're holding the deck with your pinky and your index finger on this long edges. Two fingers are resting on top. The other one is the end grip or it's also called the beetle grip. You're holding the deck like this with your thumb on this short edge and on the opposite short edge you're holding it with your middle finger and your index finger is resting on top. Also end grip in your left hand would look something like this. So you're holding the deck with uh, your thumb and your middle finger on the opposite long edges and your index finger is resting on the bottom over here. And uh, now there's also a grip uh, where you're holding a few cards from two to five, a small packet of cards. It's called the corner grip when you can rotate playing cards like this. You're holding the cards with your 
thumb over here and with your middle finger. And finally, when you're forming two-handed cuts, oftentimes they are starting with the Z-grip. And arguably, the first uh, card flourish uh, that is called Colors Cut, it utilizes the Z-grip. It is widely believed that this is what started modern cardistry. There is also a variation on this one. We made a tutorial. The Z-grip also starts the Sybil Cut, published by Chris Kenner. A few years later, this 1980s, 1990s. So the Z-grip looks like this. You start with the elevated mechanics grip and uh, you approach with your right hand and lift about two thirds of the deck like this. And uh, simultaneously, as you're lifting with the thumb of your right hand, uh, your index finger is uh, splitting this top packet into two. So this way you're having three separate packets in your hand and uh, this way you're forming a letter Z. So this way it's called Z-grip. So now let's talk about one-handed cuts and there is of course swing cuts that you probably would want to start mastering one-handed cuts like Charlie cut, Revolution cut, we made a separate tutorial on this, I'll be not teaching this in this video because it's a lot of material to cover, but this is what you want to start with. You don't need to go into some complex overwhelming stuff, just start with something simple and we made a separate video, some people may be saying their hands are not built for this, their hands are too small. And I will assure you that it is not the case, your hands are exactly perfectly sized for cardistry and if you're having trouble with basic cards, you may want to wrap a rubber band around a packet uh, like this and a wrap a rubber band around another packet. This way you have two secure packets and you can perform cardistry without cards slipping all over the place. And eventually, when you will get down the main motion, you will take the rubber bands out of the equation and start performing flourishes as if uh, these packets are glued. And this is all called practice and practice is the key to everything that I'm about to talk about. You need to put in hours in order to get a result. So the shuffles, there are fair shuffle, rifle shuffle, the classic, a few other shuffles, we made a separate video on that. Not only it is a useful skill to master just to maintain a deck of playing cards, it's also helping you to break in a deck of playing cards. So imagine you just bought a deck of playing cards, cards are extremely slippery, and uh, in order to ensure that there is no pockets of air and the cards are actually a little bit easier to use, you need to break them in. And for that, you do all the different dribbles, all the different fans, all the springs, all the shuffles. And this way the cards will be prepared for uh, more complex stuff. I want to talk about fans. I uh, made a separate video about fans. Fans is something that I was struggling a lot. Don't be discouraged. It took me months and months of practice in order to be able to get at least somewhat decent. And eventually with uh, practice you'll be able to get it down. One more time, check out the tutorial video. And it is also important aspect of cardistry. You just don't want to skip it at all. Another one is dribbles. Card springs, there's also waterfall, all the classic moves. We're explaining all of this in our tutorial videos. I'll be linking everything in the description. So all of these are extremely important and eventually with time you'll be uh, developing a skill of not only mastering the move, but also improving on the move in a way where it looks really good. Because cardistry is majorly about looks, about the style that you're adding to the flourish. And when we talk about classic flourishes, you can perform a dribble like this. That doesn't look impressive, but you can of course perform a dribble like Anaconda that looks a little bit more massive. I'm talking about improving on the range of the motion of the flourishes. So when you're performing a spread, you can perform a small spread like this, but you can also perform a really, really big spread this way, making it uh, look much more professional. Other flourishes also include one card. So this is also important, uh, classic flourishes like uh, card throws, some flourishes like Angel over here or Flicker or also Bullet like this. So there are a lot of one-handed flourishes. We have a separate video on one-handed flourishes. We're explaining this and it's important for you to be able to perform all of this and start combining those. So once you're mastering one-handed cuts like a Charlie cut and you mastered a backdrop for instance. This is a flourish by Ken Ho. Imagine you can combine it, form a Charlie cut, form a backdrop, 
into the charlie cut and close the charlie cut so that will be your first combo and that will be your first step into the world of cardistry where everything is so complex nowadays but uh, don't be discouraged everyone has started from somewhere so now that you want to proceed to more knackier stuff i would suggest you checking out some of our tutorials we have a lot of tutorials on two-handed cuts if you go to our website we have everything ranged at difficulty levels all of these are free if a move is extremely knacky if you can't really make it work just leave it return to it in a week and you'll be surprised how your muscle memory is adapting and eventually you'll be able to get it down one more time it's all about practice don't be discouraged and uh, that is the video i hope it helped if you want to support the channel make sure to check out these teas absolutely fantastic quality and of course we'll be trying our best to upload more consistently now unfortunately right now russia is bombing our country we are involved in different activities helping volunteers you can also support our efforts uh, by purchasing a zdv2 from our website i hope you enjoy this one and i'll see you next time